Raggedy Ann, a thank you, please, and I love you book. Anne fluffs up the pillow and smooths out the sheet. Her bed is not lumpy or bumpy, it's neat. She tucks in the blanket and puts on the spread. No wonder the pup loves to sleep on her bed. Andy is picking up his toys. His room will soon be neat. Anne looks in and smiles and says, Why, Andy, what a treat. He puts away his shoes and shirt a sweater and some ties. When friends come in to play today, they won't believe their eyes. Anne holds her puppy safely, gently, but firmly too. She doesn't want to hurt him. He's so very small and new. And when Andy brings the puppy's food and puts him down with care, he tastes the food and finds it good. And soon there's no more there. Anne sometimes goes on shopping trips. She likes that very much. She knows that she may look at things, but never, never touch. The things in stores are all for sale. They are not meant for play. So if she damaged anything, poor Anne would have to pay. People are very happy to hear Andy on the phone because he always says hello in such a friendly tone. He calls his sister to the room if she is far away or takes a message for her in a very grown-up way. Here in the sandbox are Andy and Anne. Share all of their playthings the best way they can. To fight in the sandbox they know is not wise unless you like sand in your mouth, ears, and eyes. Andy likes swinging high himself. And that's the reason why he pushes Anne so hard that soon she's way up in the sky. But when poor Anne calls high enough and squeals for all she's worth, he slows her down again with care and brings her safe to earth. When Anne falls down and scrapes her knee, Andy is very quick to put a bandage on it with a kiss to make it stick. Anne won't give Andy a piece of her candy. It's not that she's mean to te meaning to tease. He wants it so badly she'd give him so some gladly. But Andy forgot to say please. When Anne comes running in from play, she always wipes her feet in case her shoes are dirty from the playground or the street. It only takes a little time, but she is glad, I'm sure. She's not a caterpillar with a dozen feet or more. Andy takes care to close the door as softly as a mouse, for then he knows he won't disturb the people in the house. He never, never slams the door, for Anne just might take fright and jump and drop the chocolate cake she's baking for tonight.
My name is Andy, says Andy to Anne. And he shakes her hand like a gentleman. My name is Anne, says Anne with a smile. And she shakes his hand in a friendly style. Andy and Anne know each other well. They're very good friends, as you can tell. But now they're practicing what to do when they meet someone who is really new. Andy unwraps his spaceship. Oh, thank you, Anne, he cries. It's what I've always wanted. A really great surprise. Let's fly away together for a visit to the moon. We'll splash down into the ocean and be home this afternoon. Anne's next in turn to pin the tail, but Andy's hesitating. Anne wishes he would hurry, for she's getting tired of waiting. She stands there very quietly, though, because she knows it's true that if you wait for others, they will kindly wait for you. Nobody hears the telephone. Nobody hears the door. Nobody hears the cat's meow or Rover's sleepy snore. Nobody hears the baby howl because he wants his toys. Raggedy Ann's new one-man band is making too much noise. Ann doesn't want dear Andy to slip and hurt his head or bump his nose or break his toes and have to stay in bed. She holds the chair quite steady for this will help him land as smoothly as an astronaut with cookies in his hand. Somebody spilled the milk today and quickly wipes it up. She knows just who that someone was and it was not the pup. A spill is such a messy thing, but paper towels are handy. And Anne is always pleased to do a little chore for Andy. Anne puts her boots on by herself. It's puddly in the street. Sometimes she tumbles over, but she gets them on her feet. Of course it takes her quite a time to fasten up her slicker, but when she has when she's had more practice, she will be a whole lot quicker. When Andy and Anne sit at meals, they never reach for food or sprawl or stick their elbows out. They know it would be rude. They sit up straight and pass the salt, as grown-up people do. And though they like dessert the best, they eat their spinach too. Anne wants to read a fairy tale, but Andy wants a scary tale. And yet, they never disagree about which story it should be. They choose in turn, they wait it the way it's fun. They read two tales instead of one. When time has come to go to bed, Anne never starts to pout or whine or fuss or drag her feet and wear her family out. She kisses everyone good night and tells the cat and pup, the sooner I go off to bed, the sooner I'll be up. I'll give you a bear hug, says Andy to Anne, and he hugs her and hugs her as tight as he can. I love you, says Anne, getting up on her toes and she gives him a kiss on the tip of his nose. They are fond of each other 
it's easy to see. And the reason is simple, as simple can be. They use their good manners whenever they go, and this makes them very nice people to know. The end.